Hi, this is Doodling Debbie here again with um, part two of your basic design tools. And we're going to start over here with our grid. And I'm just going to show you these as quickly as I possibly can to keep this video short. Right here is Show Grid. And I'm going to hit click on Show Grid so we can see it. Up here, you can change your dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and change them to a one uh, inch spacing and my divisions of two and I'm going to change my line color to black and there we go that's how you mess with that now I'm going to go ahead and undo all of these because I like them just the way they are okay over here is your registration marks if I wanted to print and cut this of course I'd want to see my registration marks and this is set kind of like more to letter. I didn't change my page settings, but I'd show my registration marks. And if it's you're losing a lot of your, your cut and print area, you may want to resize your registration marks because anything in this hash mark area or outside of it in these hash mark areas, they will not print and they will not cut. Okay, now I'm going to go to my page settings. I mean my... Uh, cut settings and I usually set mine to the cardstock setting and if you change them to any of these you'll see this adjustment made and I do have it set on the ratchet plate and of course you can also opt to change to the sketch pen this here is going to take me to my page settings since I do have a cameo except this is not hooked up to it that's why you see all these funky lines I would change it to my 12 by 12 if I were using 12 by 12 paper and my cutting mat at 12 by 12 and of course, if I were using letter, I would go to letter and letter. And you also see how my registration marks have changed. I'm going to go back to the registration marks right now. And I'm going to turn them off. Okay, now we're going to go to our um, auto trace tool right here. It kind of looks like a little blue butterfly in a box. And here is where you select your trace tool, your auto trace tool. I'm just going to do a basic trace of this little guy here. A quick one too, I hope. I'm going to turn off my high pass filter and increase my threshold. And if I wanted his eyes to cut out, I would select this trace area so it make a little cut pattern around his eyes, but I just want it to go right around the edge. So I'm going to go trace outer edge. There we go. And we have that. Now, this is your offset tool. And like I said, you have the regular offset down at the very bottom of your um, software. But I like to use this, use it this way. I'm going to do an offset. And right here is where you can adjust the settings to make it smaller or bigger. And then I'm going to click on him again. And I'm going to do an in internal offset just to show you what that looks like and that makes an offset inside your compound path and I can adjust it really small down to like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and undo this and undo this and undo this. We're just going to get rid of these offsets. Okay, now we're going to go over to the modify tool and before I get started with anything else, I'm going to fill this with some color. I'm going to fill them with red. Now remember, this is my cut line for this little guy here. I'm going to show you what else you can do. Go back over to Modify, and I hit Detach Lines. Now, if I just want the shape of this to print in somewhere, I have the shape, and I have my cut line. So that's what happens when you hit Detach Lines. I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to show you the subtract tool really quick here. I'm going to just draw a little shape right around this little ball on his hat. Select this and select my little elf. And if I hit the subtract tool, it took off that little ball for me, but you can also use your eraser or your knife tool. Okay, I'm going to undo that. And now we're going to try it with subtract all so I can show you what happens. I hit subtract all. You think it just left a little ball there on the top, but it didn't because this is a separate piece now too. In case you need to use it somewhere else on your design. Okay, I'm going to undo that. 
undo that, undo that. And let's go ahead and hit the crop tool. And see, it just leaves a little ball there on the top. Okay, now I'm going to undo that. And the reason why is this, both of these images were selected and when we did a crop all. There goes my puppies acting up again. Sorry about that. Okay, now we're going to do a divide. And you'll notice exactly what it does. It's going to divide. I'm going to have a little shape here. And that's going to be separate. And this will be a third element. Because that's exactly what it did. It divided this out of this to leave us this. The Modify tool will come in really handy. And I advise you to familiarize yourself with all of the different things in here. Um, let's see. I'm going to slide him down for just a moment. And I'm going to draw. No, we're not. We're going to use him again. Just to show you how this is done. Okay, I'm going to take this cut image here. I'm going to scale him down a bit. Because we're going to make an elf border. Bring my elf down here. I'm going to draw this out here. This will show you a little bit of the replicate tool because that's what we're going to next. Replicate and I'm going to do a row of four. And maybe we'll duplicate uh, to the right one more. Oops, I need to select him though. Duplicate right. Nope, we're going to undo that. That'll give us too many of them. Okay, now that we have this, these four here, and I want to make a little elf border, I'm going to use my arrow keys and move him down here about to the same edge that the other one's on. So it balances out a little bit. That looks about right. Okay, now I'm going to select all of my little elves by dragging my cursor over it. And I, now I'm going to go over here to where we space everything or align everything. I want to space this horizontally. Well, it shouldn't have done that. It usually lines them right up. Let's see. Oh, it's shift. And it should space them evenly for me. When you know when I'm doing a video, there we go. <laughs> it did work. I was just getting ready to complain a little too much. Now that we have these spaced horizontally, and it's going to make a cute little border, and I may even want to change this a little bit and drag it out so it goes out beyond, and drag this out so it goes out beyond, so it gives us a little bit more balance. And say I move one of these guys like this, he gets moved upward. We'll move him up a little bit. Now, the great thing about this is we can align them all to the bottom, align at bottom, and he places them right back in place where he needs to be. Now, I'm going to move all of these up just a tad. And I'm going to select, or I can go Control A to select it all, because we're going to go back to the Modify tool so we can weld this to show you that it made a nice little border. I'm going to go over here to my Fill Color tool. And I want this to be the exact same red that's in his hat. So right here, that little piece that looks like a microphone, we're going to click on that. It's going to select the color I want from his hat. So now I have a matching border to go along with my elf. And remember, in your color thing, you also have advanced options where you can type in a color. I'm going to show you a website that I use. It's called Color Scheme Design 3. And this color here well, is this. And all I do is click on that. I right click. Copy that color. I'm going to lower this so we can see our thing. And if I paste that in here, paste those color numbers in there, 
and enter. Oh, that was my green. I'm sorry. I picked my green earlier, and I guess it must have left it in there. Now we'll do this one. Click there. All right, click copy. Lower this. Paste this color in there. Hit enter, and there's the red that I selected from my color scheme picker. And you can do that. You can pick complement colors on that website. And if you come to the Silhouette Plus form, I have a forum that's just for websites to find all these cool little gadgets that help us create and design. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and go over here. And this is our gradient fill. So we can gradient fill it here again in advanced options. We can change that by moving this angle. Kind of looks like peppermint now a little bit, doesn't it? We can also change the colors while we're while we are in here, but I'm going to go back to that red or maybe even select a prettier red and we can make it more transparent if we just want it to be very pale. And that's how we use our gradient tool. Okay, now we're going to go to our pattern tool. And I'm going to fill this with a pattern that you can pretty much see pretty good. We're going to fill it with this. I'm going to show you in advanced options that you can also rotate them again. I did this so you could see it really clearly. I like it just like that. I can scale my pattern really small all the way down that size or you can make it really big. You can also change the transparency on this if you want it to be pale. So that's your fill pattern tool. Now we're going to go to our line tool. If I wanted to print my lines and I wanted to change the color to say this purple here. Now if you look our lines are purple. And that works out really well when you go to print. But over here you want to click on print lines and selected shapes so you get that purple color. But as long as we're here this is where our line style window and you can obviously tell that because it looks like a bunch of different lines and sometimes I use this to do my perforated lines instead of using my cut style window so I'm going to go here I'm not going to straighten that out this is just for demo you click on one of these and there you go you can also change the thickness of your line and look at that if you wanted something with a whole bunch of polka dots to cut out, let's look at our cut style window. And you go cut edge and there we go. So we cut out all those little circles there. Okay, let's go ahead and undo this. And I'm going to go back to my line style window because obviously I don't want them that thick. So we're going to reduce that back down about there. Now over here we're going to go to our cut style window. Before you do anything check this. Lots of times people have changed them and they haven't checked them. So if you had this on no cut you would do it um, and you were doing a print and cut you would only find out that you just printed because you didn't have cut selected. So double 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 check that. Okay and most of you know that this is your type tool and I showed you that in the basics the other day but we'll go ahead and do it one more time and as you can see I didn't change my line style so I want to go back in and change that line style. If I double click on this it brings it right back to where I want it I can select all of this again and I can do character spacing, bring it in, especially if I want to weld. I can change my font type to 140 up to 288 points. Um, if I'm typing something to be printed, I can center it really nice here. We can change it to a bold, an italic, and we can also underline it. And of course, all of your selections of your fonts are over here. So that's your type tool. 
Okay, I'm going to delete all of this stuff out because our little area is getting kind of crowded. And this is a move tool. We select this and you go and go left by the different degrees up down. You can go down. You can also move to a corner and just by typing your numbers in here. I don't use this one too much. Okay, the rotate window. Only if I need things to be in an exact angle do I use this one. And sometimes you will for design, but this is how you can rotate it at an exact angle. And you can also make them custom down here. And your scale window. You can go 50%, which make it 50% smaller. Or I can go up to 200% and go right back to the same size. And I don't think that the regular 2.2.0 has the share window, so I won't cover that. Okay, and we did some of the alignments before, but I'll do it again. Because there's definitely times we need things lined up. And I'm doing a square. I'm draw this here. And just to show you how it works, I'm going to move it over to the side. But I want it to align right in the middle, so I'm going to select my circle select my rectangular shape and I'm going to align center so it perfectly lines it up with my rectangle and the same way if I think it does exactly the same thing you go align middle um, if we hit align bottom of course it's going to align it to the bottom and we already did the spacing because I showed you that with the elves up here and this is a tool that you will use a whole lot, as well as you will use your replicate tool, as I did with my elves. I replicated them with a row of four, but you can mirror above. And this works really great when I go to do some welding. I'm going to delete that square out. I'm going to go uh, move this one, two clicks down. Move this two clicks up. And then I hit my weld button. So I get a perfect shape. And when you select something, of course, you can just, uh, oh, we can fill the page with these shapes too. Okay, let's go ahead and undo this. And like I said, we've already covered our modify tool, and you'll want to play with all these tools, but this gives you the basics. And these are my favorite here, my undo buttons. And this is your redo button. And in Silhouette Designer Edition, this is my most favorite tool. And that's because I can go in really big to work on anything I want to. And this, I just arrow drag, and it lets you go up really, really close. But that's in the Studio Designer Edition. And this takes us back to the normal page view. And then they, these up here are basic, uh, like your cut and your paste and your tools. This is your, you pretty much would know how to use these. This is Send to Silhouette, and this is just if you want to send it to the printer first. This is if you have your SD card. And this here is opening a file, a little shortcut to go in, besides going File Open. So I'm going to cancel. Anyway, that's another little basic of the tools. I hope to get into more in depth doing some designs and stuff, and we'll try that really soon, like uh, an example of making a basket or something like that, how we would go about doing that. Well, have a great day. I'll see you all in the Silhouette Plus forum. Bye now.